So there was a time when I used to do a fair bit of racing, uh, dirt track racing. In fact, that was all I really did. Um, but I gave that up. Uh, I do still have some parts left over. And I've kind of decided lately that I might want to get back into racing, but I don't have any time. So what I've done is picked up a computer racing setup. I have a four speed back steering wheel, pedal setup, handbrake. I also dug my old racing seat out of uh, the shed, harness, and I pulled out my old racing stuff for building roll cages. So I've got my pipe bender, which is homemade, pipe notcher, and what the plan is here is also picked up some roll bar. I'm going to try and build a little uh, racing rig, something kind of cool with a roll cage and stuff to do some racing in my garage. So. Uh, let's see what we can do. Oh. Yeah. He's like, seems like my seat might have shrunk since last time I was in here. <laughs> this will do. Alright, so, start with the frame on the floor. I'm going to make it about that wide. <laughs> this is bringing back uh, lots of good memories. Anyways, so I'm notching them with the pipe notcher here. And what you do is you're cutting the pipe longer than it should be. And then you're wanting your notch, the inside of your notch, to the inside of your notch to be your total length. So I'm adding half an inch to each end of the pipe when I cut it so the notch ends up at the proper length. And I know you're all going to say, use lubricant, use lubricant on that cutter. Well, this is the same hole saw I've had for two full roll cages, so don't start with me. This is the base frame that the seat's going to attach to. You can see I've just kind of tack welded it together more than a tack weld just so it doesn't fall apart but enough so I can still change it if I have to. Uh, I've gone with four feet by 16 inches randomly mainly because I've been doing some drywalling lately and those dimensions make sense to me. Okay so here's a reason why I don't really throw away little chunks of stuff especially that I've cut off which does make for a little bit of a junk area but I know that somewhere I've got, yes, these, should be another one here, mm, nope, aha, uh -huh. so these are just cut off of some square tubing from some other project, I'm going to use these to mount the seat to the roll bar. Like so, drill some holes in them, and voila, even racy looking. Okay, so front of the seat is mounted. Now there's more mounting points on the back here. I'm thinking what I want to do is bring some roll bar up and do a little hoop here. So I use a pipe bending software called Bend Tech Easy. I'm not even sure if it's available anymore. I've had it for about 15 years, but this is the shape of the hoop I'm going to do. And in this software, you're just going to enter all your measurements for that hoop. And what it does, I'm not sure if you can see it here, is but it's going to give you a total cut length and the location of each bend and how many degrees. That's the location to start the bends. So I'll mark that all out on my pipe and I'll start bending it.
making some progress. Uh, I thought I'd stop and show you how I'm getting everything squared up as far as the side rails go. And what I've done is cut two pieces of plywood at eight inches and I've got those screwed down to my workbench and I have the frame locked in with some screws as well. <clears throat> and using a square up from there I've marked out the edges and then I can measure all my distances to the tubing from there. So that when I get this welded together it's fairly square. Again I'm not actually racing with this so it doesn't really matter but Another thing I use wood for a lot instead of a measuring tape is, for instance, I want to put a pipe in here to connect these two together. Well, you're trying to measure that and eyeball it. It's not so easy, so I just find a scrap piece of wood with my chop saw. I cut it down to the right size just by until it fits nice. And then I can get either get my measurement from that or I can just use this to mark right on the, bu the bar and cut it at that and it'll fit perfectly. Opted to mount the pedal assembly on a single bar single crossbar with four bolts off of this bracket type of thing. Here is the bare frame all welded up. Obviously I didn't go true crazy with the welding. Some spots missed underneath and stuff because there's pretty low chance like I said of this being in an accident. see some of the brackets I did for the seat, brackets for the wheel, pedal mounts, one compromise I did have to make is I did have to cut and weld the uh, bar over your head because my bender doesn't do that tight of a bend so it's two pipes welded together which I still have to do some sanding on to get it smooth the rest of it's ready to go. The computer's going to sit right here. So let's spray her up. Yeah, I mean, every after everything was painted up, it's just a matter of mounting everything, throwing the seat in, cover on getting my belts all hooked up and basically building uh, the race simulator, getting everything hooked up and ready to go. Well, it's all ready to go. Got my e-brake mounted on some of these roll bar clamps. Well, I did end up putting a little bit of adjustability in. I, I uh, put some smaller piece of pipe just to allow a little bit of wheel adjustability as well as on the monitor. Slide it in, up and down. Yeah, got some casters on it just in case I need to get to the beer fridge. That kind of thing. Or I can just push it around, just kind of a little more realistic. <laughs> Anyways, it's pretty awesome. Uh, I've been racing for a while with it now. Not a super fancy computer, and I'm not really going to get into that kind of thing. It's more about the building of the rig, but it's nice and tight, and everything's mounted really firmly, so it really makes racing 
feel that much more realistic. Anyways, thanks for watching the build.